Hi, welcome back. Today for the Fusion Basics tutorial, we are going to be doing a few things in the text plus notes. Just basic stuff. I won't go too deep into it. Let's get to it. Today we are going to start on the edit page. Let's go to Effects, Titles, Text Plus, drag that to the timeline. Let me just go through the features it has. It will type welcome on here. Welcome three times. Now you can change the font. Uh, it's bold, extra bold. Let's speak extra bold. You can change the color to anything we wish to have. Then change the size. And this size can be keyframed so you can increase the size. The tracking, that's the space between the characters in the text. Line spacing is the space between each line. You can omit that. Let's go to direction. You can change direction. Horizontal is the default. Reverse horizontal, it just swaps the characters. Vertical, it arranges it vertically. Then reverse vertical, it does the same thing. Swaps the text across. Let's go back to what it was before, automatic. Let's reduce, let's put the tracking back to something that makes sense. Then line direction, it can be top to bottom or bottom to top. And we go there, let me change this to, let's say home, welcome home. And I pick bottom to top, it swaps the text. Then right on, I can animate this. I can go to the beginning of this, click on this, animate it. Let's say I drag it down to zero. I go to the middle here and I drag it down to the beginning. If I go to this, I can just place it as if I'm typing text, which is cool. Let's set this back to automatic. And that's basically text plus no, the basic tab. For layout, you can use this to move the text around. Usually I advise to, if you're gonna move text around, to move it around using the transform node, but there are instances where you just get to move it around. If I want to position it a certain place on the screen, and all that I can use the center X, Y. I can, the center Z, I can zoom in and zoom out with it. Same thing with size. Let's ignore perspective for now. Let's go to circle. The text is arranged in a circle. So you can move it, zoom in, zoom out. You can also arrange it on a path. You can click here. Let's go here, go to fusion overlay, click here, click there, click there. And I have a path. I can move the text along this path. Just like that. Let's go back to point. You can rotate the text this way. You can rotate the text this way. And we can rotate the text this way. Then background, you can change the background of this text. Plus note, there's just a bunch of things you can do on the layout. For transform, it can be based on character, words, or lines. If I make it lines, I can go to Z, rotate. You see each line is rotating separately. Then go on to, if I see characters, that is that for character, then share. You can move the text that way on the X axis or move it on the Y axis. The size, you can increase the size on the X axis, you can increase the size on the Y axis. It's all down to you how you want to deform the text. Now comes the shading tab. This shading tab is so versatile. Let me expand this so we get to see it completely. By default, element one is enabled. This is the color of the text that we've written, right? I can decide to change the color to something else, like that, right? All these are explanatory. Then we come to this point. You can make it an outline. You can make it just even a block of color. You can make it just a box around the text. 
or you can go back to the way it was. Then you can, this, the text can have a solid color or a gradient color. If I click on gradient color, I can click on this, change the color to perhaps red. Click OK. And then we have something nice, right? So that's that. Then we have this image thing. You know this see-through text that people talk about? You can put images inside text easily. You can do that here. Just click on clip, browse. Let's just pick this. So we have that in there. Then I can go here and say mapping level food image. So this now shows the actual image through the text. If I decide to make the size of this text bigger, let's make it even one. You get to see the footage inside the text. This is a crude way of making that image inside text, but there are some instances where you just want that image inside the text uh, whilst the text is on some other footage. This is a simple way of doing that. Let's go back to solid, reduce the size of the text. Now comes the softness. You can increase the softness on the X axis, on the Y axis. You can do that across both of them. You can even put a glow on it, but the glow only gets applied if you apply a bit of the softness. Go to position. You can also move the text around in the shading tab. Then rotation, you can rotate the text. Share, the same thing we discussed. Then size, the same thing we discussed under transform. Now comes the other part. I can click on two. Right now it's not enabled. If I enable it, by default it's red outline. I can decide that I don't want it to be outline. I want it to be, yes, I want it to be this this box around the text. And I want the color to be perhaps maybe darker shade of blue. This, or we can even just go here and go to outline and give it a white outline. So we have a white outline, we can increase the thickness. So you can layer up to eight elements on one text plus note. Let's go to, note, to this three. You can see black shadow, we say enabled. Let's see, as you might change the color of the shadow to uh, something greenish. Is it okay? So you have the shadow there. You can lay out all sorts. I say enable this, we have this blue border. You can change that. You don't want it to be a border, you just want it to be that. You can change it to make it to something else. Right, so it's it's just down to your imagination what you can do. So I disable this, I go back to three, disable it, go back to two, disable it. Go here. So that's the power of the shading tab of the text loss node. So there's a limitation for the text loss node on the edit page. If I right click on this, remember the last tutorial I did on text effects for text follower? If I right click on this and I add follower, there's no way on the edit page for me to access the follower. So I have to go to the, right click on this, open it in Fusion page, and I click on this, and you see this modifiers, and I have the follower under here, then I can access the tools of follower. I want to go into follower here because I done it in the previous tutorial. You can see that up here, but I'm going to go back to tools, right click on this and remove the follower. I'm going to go through a few modifiers. See this animate? Let me show you how it works. Let me drag this text to the center here, make it a little darker so we can see what we're working with. Yep, make it size bigger. Yep. Now, see this text here? Let's say I move to frame 10. Let's say I click on here and I keyframe this. I go to frame 10, I type sun. Daughter. I go to frame 35. Father. I go to frame 45. 
mob. Well, you get the drift. If I go to the beginning and I play, you see changing welcome, home son, daughter, father, mother. So this is a nice way to use one text plus node to switch at, at different points in time. You can keyframe that. Right click on this. Remove template style text. That's all that keyframing we are doing. Then there's character level styling. For character level styling, the way it works is I can change specific. If I click on this, you see that green thing around it? I can go to E and L. I've selected both of them. I go to modifiers. And I can go here and change that to any, let's say, I change to another font. I can increase the size. I can select this O, select another font. Increase the size. So I can change the text, shape, position of any of the text using the character level styling. It's pretty crazy stuff. It's so crazy what we can do in one single text plus node. Note that when we came to Fusion tab, it was displayed as template. That's how it displays when you move from the text plus node that you dragged into the edit timeline as against if we drag this in like this, okay? Let's just even rename this so it doesn't get too confusing. Now, text. We're done with character level styling. Right click on this, remove character level styling, it resets. The next thing we want to do is this thing called scramble text, scramble. If I go to the beginning of this text, let's go to modifiers. You see the scramble modifier? If I increase this, let's say I increase this to, let's say 10, right? And I keyframe this and I go to frame 20, I make this zero. Automatically keyframe because I changed the value. I click here and I play it. Very simple stuff. The first time I saw it, I felt, wow, this is so crazy. But it's pretty straightforward stuff. That's how you do the text scramble effect. Go to tools, right click on this, remove text scramble. Okay, so one last thing I want to go through is time code. There are sometimes you're editing and you wish to have time code on the video. Just go in here, pick that time code, slam this on your footage as I go here and I drag it to whatever length I want it to be. Let me change the text color to white because of the background there. Let me go back here. Whatever length I drag it to, you see this time I play it now. So you see one second, two seconds. So we have that there. We can now resize this and put this anywhere on the screen. Let's go here and check fusion overlay. Click on transform. Let's reduce the size of this. We can move this somewhere on the corner of the screen. Make it light, make it even smaller. Yep, something like that, and ta-da, you've done your time code. Yep, so that's basically it for the text gloss node. I hope you were able to learn one or two things from this tutorial. It's pretty straightforward stuff. And thanks for watching, and have a nice one. Cheers.